Hi, I'm Alex Archbull, and I've been buying and selling antiques since I was nine years old. From basements to scrapyards, I'll look just about anywhere I can to find lost antiques and collectibles. And sometimes I'll go big and buy everything. I never know what's going to happen or who I'm going to meet. This is our life, this is our adventure, and this is Curiosity Inc. Hey guys, and welcome to today's episode. I am inside of our little cargo trailer, and that's because we have bought the contents from inside of a house. Now, that's not unusual for us. We do this all the time. We often buy things that clear stuff out so people can sell the property. In this case, though, everything is packed up. So I literally have no idea what's inside any of these boxes. All I've been told is that uh, the family, well, actually the person that used to live there, uh, was a senior citizen, and for years, they were an antique dealer. The family box up all the stuff, uh, but none of the kids really have room or space or time to deal with it all, so they contacted me, and well, guess what? Today, we're gonna go down and pick all this stuff up, load up the trailer, and then we'll dig through and see what we got. Um, kids are gonna come help, because it's gonna be a lot of manpower needed to empty this place out in a short amount of time, but it should be fun. So let's get loaded up and head off and see what we find. I've arrived with helpers in tow. Everybody's a little bit tired. It is uh, Sunday, it's Father's Day. This is what we're doing on our Father's Day. Thank you guys for all coming to help me out today. Yeah. First things first, we have a shed full of boxes, a lot of boxes, with a lot of unknown stuff. <laughs> um, so I guess Abigail, Melissa and I are gonna get busy starting to haul stuff out. You guys ready for this? Yep. It's raining, so it's not the greatest day for this. But uh, yeah, I guess where do we start? We'll just grab a, grab some boxes and get going. Jason's got a box on the way out the door. Inside the house, we have the boxes in the kitchen that have to go. One of those old square box fans. There's a little bedroom full of stuff. I'm not gonna take those doors, obviously that belongs to the house. There's all kinds of stuff in here. And this entire room full of boxes. So, quite a pile of things. And obviously a lot of stuff is probably just gonna go to charity. Like I don't need rubber boots, <laughs> but there is kind of a cool, looks like a semi truck and a model or a plastic case over there. Anyway, Steven, I'm going to get out of your way because uh, mom needs me out in the shed helping to clear that out. We have been steadily moving boxes for about the last hour. We've made some progress. It's officially the last thing on earth I'd like to be doing today. It's rainy. Father's Day just happened to time out this way. This is when we had to come do it. But let's go see how the progress is going inside. I see you, Melissa. Okay. Let's see if we're making any progress in these bedrooms. I see an Abigail. And that room is just about done. A couple little boxes left in there. How's it going in here, Steven? I'm standing out of the way so we can get by. Nearly done. Nearly done in there? Yeah. Okay. That's good news. Oh yeah, just some boxes of random assorted stuff. Okay, spoon collection. Looks like there's lots of spoons around here. Um, all right, Jason. So take anything that's kind of moderately square shaped, like all these boxes. Yeah. Um, incidentally, for those watching this, I'm helping when I'm not filming. It's not that I'm just sitting here filming. Uh, lots of knitting needles. Okay, I'm gonna start carrying some of these boxes out myself. So down goes the camera and uh, up go the boxes. As we work on clearing out the house, I am gonna have to come back to the shed later. Fortunately for me, yeah, there's no light in here. Um, but this is where I think all the good stuff is. I think this is where the inventory, there's a, I think that's a uh, old antique general store tape dispenser. There's all kinds of interesting antiques and collectibles in this shed. 
I think this is where the value is going to be, but I really don't know. And I'm going to have to be patient and wait because we are running out of room in that trailer. So for now, see, there's a bay blanket right here. For now, um, I'm going to close the shed door. And we'll come back to this in a little bit. It's the next morning. It was just pouring buckets of rain yesterday. So we decided to just clear out the inside of the house and work on the shed today. Now, everybody else has school. Melissa's teaching. The other kids have tests and stuff. Jason is off today, though. So I got the kid coming to help me. Look at this giant pile of stuff. This is not an ideal situation for me because a, I normally have to park a lot of cars and stuff in here, but also, uh, well, this is the reason why we're building this other building is so I can take the stuff out there and sort it there and not take up my valuable garage space. However, um, what sucks about this is that um, I not only do I really, really not know what I have in here, uh, normally when I do these house clearouts, I do it at the property so I can sift the garbage, I can sift the donate stuff, and then I only bring back the really good stuff so I can sort that and get it ready for sale. I gotta do all that here, which means I basically brought a hoard to my own house um, and we're going back for more. It's gonna be just a wild amount of stuff, um, but very soon we'll start the sorting process and hopefully this will be all worthwhile. I guess we'll see. Jason has come with me this morning. Yep. Hey kiddo. Um, and we have this whole shed to empty out. Now we've already done one trip today. We did a trip out of here yesterday, but it is still very, very full. In fact, if this was a storage unit auction, um, this would probably go for quite a bit because it's packed, jam packed full of stuff. Uh, so we've returned with the trailer, uh, cause we need to fit a whole bunch of stuff in. Last time we were here though, we thought we heard a squirrel running around in here. Oh yeah or a mouse or something. Something is in here with us is what I'm getting at. So I think when we get back to that last row of boxes, we might have a bit of a surprise. But for now, um, let's start grabbing some boxes and we'll get that trailer loaded up. Okay, now that that is all done and moved over, giant pile in the garage and the trailer is completely full. I don't even have room for it in here. So I'm gonna try and tackle this. Uh, I'm gonna do the stuff in the garage first. We're gonna go through, sort, sift, see what we find, and then we'll do the stuff in the trailer later. This is gonna be in a huge amount of work. This is a big undertaking, but without further ado, let's see what I actually bought. Incidentally, um, all of this stuff, all of that stuff, plus the trailer full, I paid $2,700 for, but I had to take it all sight unseen, which means that I was going off of the few things that I could see, hoping that there was gonna be a few gems in here to make it worthwhile. So uh, a gamble, but uh, in the past, these sort of deals have paid off. We'll see if it does again. Let's start digging, folks. Okay, well, some of the things that were kind of lying out in the open, like this uh, 1940s, likely 40s or 50s, probably 40s, it's an old shirt store display. But look, he's lost his head. I guess what they would have done is they would have had like a shirt folded up inside of here. The new Casino Italian looking sports shirt. And then that would be his head. And this would have been a store display. That's actually, that's hand painted. Somebody painted that by hand. I can see the brush marks on it. That's actually kind of impressive. <laughs> well, like a sign painter. It's a lost art almost. So um, kind of a neat store display. You can see his, his head needs to be glued back on. But kind of a cool piece of 40s uh, store memorabilia that you don't see too often. Uh, the bin I was just showing you a second ago, we have a nice brass uh, torch. And that's the thing with uh, buying the estate of a former antique dealer. You can see they have some of their uh, prices and stuff. They call this a stacking jug. It's a little uh, crock type jug. There's a nice little slot machine in there, solid metal. And it looks like it's still working to a degree too. It's just sort of a novelty slot machine, but still cool. Um, actually, hang on, let me, let me fix that arm in there. So pretty much everything in here is, is good and sellable. I can sell everything in this one box, but there's a lot more boxes to go. Look at this. Ah, there's a lot of boxes to go. Um, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to start going through. What does that say? Top two drawers in the China cabinet. Is it China? Okay. I see placemats. Just these look like the type of placemats you would have got at a hotel. 
That's Edmonton, Alberta legislature. Like when you used to go to a restaurant, I remember in the 80s, you'd have these sort of laminated placemats and sometimes they'd have, you know, like if you went to a truck stop, that's the type of placemat you get from there. So there's a collection of placemats, a little bit random. This looks like it's pretty much placemats and coloring stuff. Um, some kind of, oh, that's actually carved stone. That's kind of cool. That is stone that somebody's carved out by hand and made this little, I wonder if you put like a tea light candle in there or something. That's cool. I'll put, I'll put that over here with the uh, sellable stuff for now. So you can't get too discouraged when you go through a box if it looks like there's nothing in it because, uh, although it might not be a whole lot of, you know, usable stuff for me, like one of my kids might find this interesting. It's like a little uh, sketchbook, blank pages, leather bound. There's probably going to be some things in here. Lots of good stuff, uh, likely going to be for charity as well. But um, that brings me to the point. I'm going to have to start finding a system here. I'm going to need to have some empty boxes to the side where I can start to put the donatable items in. And another side where the stuff that I can sell can go in until it's all sorted. Hi. Okay. Well, let's get this box set aside and then uh, we'll keep on digging. Okay, I'm going to crack open one of these many boxes and see the type of stuff that's in it. Okay. Story of the frog. The tray is made of western red cedar, which grows extensively in Pacific Northwest. Handcrafted, made in Canada. By indigenous peoples. That's kind of cool. I'll put that in here. What else is going on in here? Got... Oh, those are those little promotional Heinz 57 baby rattles. I've had these before. They used to give these out at the uh, hospital when you had a baby. You'd leave with some food and some other stuff, and they'd give you this little Heinz 57 advertising rattle. Nice little uh, desk side clock or mantel clock from the 1950s era. You can kind of tell by that font and the style what era it's from. Wound it up a little bit, and it's ticking away. It's working pretty good. Yeah, one thing that's probably easy, easy to overlook is this. It's a little Dutch shoe, wooden shoe, or a klompen. Uh, they've got a number of different names. But you can see there's two of these, and there's names all over it. I have a feeling I know what this is. And this is actually a relic from World War II. So if you look at the names there, you can see CPL, Corporal. Um, CSM, Commanding Staff Mage. I don't know what that would be. Uh, Lieutenant Corporal right there. Um, this would have been... Uh, Captain Robinson. This would have been World War II. Canada was very involved in the liberation of Holland. And uh, this would have been a keepsake that they brought back with them. And they wrote the names of likely their whole uh, division on there. Now, I don't know how many of these guys have probably would made, it, made it back or not, if this was after the war or, or during it. But there are two. Gosh, I, this is what I love about my job is that you find these little knickknacks that are really a piece of history. That is so cool. It's folk art. It's World War II. It speaks to the era that these guys um, served in and the place they served in. Um, so looking up some of these names. Oh, yeah, look, 5th Edmonton. So this was an Edmonton regiment. So it should be pretty easy. Look, Piper, Joe Ald. So they actually had a, a Piper as part of their unit as well. 4th Corporal Gibson. Gosh, I hope these fellows made it back. But uh, that is a very special piece. Both of these are. That's going to go in my box of very special items, things I think are super cool. Um, that is just has history literally written all over it. Um, okay, we have a little old Coors beer can and old granddad Kentucky bourbon. And they're still full. Wooden uh, matchstick holder with the matches in it. A cigar box. Oh, hang on, look at this. Batman cassette from the, uh, from the Batman movie. I think this is the one that had um, uh, Michael Keaton in it as Batman. Little tobacco tin full of stuff. And some things are cooler than others. The pencil sharpeners and nail clippers and various things. Okay, I'm gonna get this box sorted out and we'll keep on trucking. This box is labeled board games. Let's see if that's what's in it. Well, that's not a board game, but it's cool. That's a uh, 
kid's knitting machine, knit magic. You can actually make your own socks <laughs> or I guess hats or stuffed animals or whatever they're making there. But that's a neat throwback piece. And actually, I bet kids nowadays would still think that's cool. If you had uh, the ability to just make your own stuff in your room, knitting is super popular right now with the young folks. That would sell for, for certain. Uh, let's see, we've got careers board game and loads of paper. Is there anything in it though? Is the question. A uh, little basket. Oh, look! Whoa, here's something for me. It's the little monkey mobile and little Charlie's Angel van that's actually uh would go perfect with my other collectibles i got up here look i got all kinds of neat cars and stuff that would fit in perfect with it that's probably like a you know little 20 dollar car right there look it's going in the my pile of stuff and that uh the monkey mobile is quite a bit more rare it's made by husky toys which is a subsidiary of corgi dating to the 60s that could be about a hundred dollars to the right person luckily for me i collect that stuff i don't have to worry about selling it i can just put it inside and add to the collection wasn't expecting that in a box full of stuff marked board games. And it feels like there's other stuff inside as well. What the heck is this? Some kind of... Oh, I... You know what? I was like, is this like a rocket? I'm like, oh no, it's upside down. It's a uh, solar light. <laughs> well, I guess if you've got imagination, it could be anything. Okay, on to another box. We have... Oh, this looks like an old box. What's in it? It's an empty box. Red Devil Wood Scraper. Oh, that's cool. I wonder if the tool is going to be in here. If the if the uh, wood scraper or the wood plane that's meant to go in here is in this box too, it would be a nice little collectible to have. Random cork for some reason. Lots of paper. At least stuff is wrapped up fairly well. I mean, that's a good sign, right? telephone insulator these aren't really worth a whole lot but you know folks buy them so we'll we'll find a box and we'll fill them up with that type of stuff that you know a sorted lot of you know telephone insulators these go on the top of a telephone pole and they wrap the wire around to insulate it literally an insulator feels like there actually might be a number of these in here uh, this is one of those collectibles that was really popular back starting probably in the 1960s when there was a lot of abandoned poles around and people would find these and then they started collecting them, but they don't have tremendous value. A certain, actually, I shouldn't say that, I should qualify it. Certain ones, like anything, can be very valuable. You know, um, it just really depends. But, you know, a clear glass one like that's not gonna pull in a whole bunch of money. That's the, oh, that's Fire King. That's the bottom of a little Fire King uh, dish or a lid actually for a Fire King dish. Hopefully the rest of it's in here too. Let's, let's see. Oh, well that's not the rest of the Fire King dish, but that is a uh, Aladdin lamp and it's a super Aladdin lamp. Uh, looks like it's the in really decent shape actually. Melt glass base, nice nickel plated um, assembly on it. It's missing the chimney, but that is a really good thing. In fact, when it comes to oil lanterns, which aren't necessarily super collectible, Aladdin's are. This is probably one of the best uh, that you can get. They they have a ring. Um, you can kind of see it down there, the white cotton that comes up with the spin of the dial. I don't know that one's not working right now, but uh, that comes up. You get a really nice glow, a really bright light off of these. They're an excellent lantern. And in fact, one of the only lanterns that uh, is worth picking up. If you ever see one at a garage sale, it says Aladdin, uh, pick it up. It really is a mixed bag of stuff. I mean, that's why when I heard former antique dealer estate, I knew there might be some interesting things. What's this? Embers. That looks like it's maybe from a, a hotel. I saw another one in here too, actually. The Seven Seas, which I recognize that name. Um, so these are some uh, vintage uh, hotel or casino type dishes in here, which is pretty neat as well. Yeah, let's see what we got in here. Huh, symbols. They are well used. I don't the brand names on these. I know actually certain symbols can be pretty collectible um, if it's a good one. I don't see any stampings on here. Oh, maybe. Made in Japan. They seem fairly thin. Set those aside. Belt. This 
That's uh, part of a sailor's outfit, that is. And it feels like there's something bunched up in the sleeve here. Oh, there's a little bonnet. <laughs> well, you never know who's gonna need one of those, I guess. I'll set, the, set that over here with the other stuff. It's not really a military issue, but kind of interesting. What do we have here? I thought it was actually woodworking tools, but it's really old kitchen equipment. That's a potato ricer. And there's an antique uh, beater, a mixer, hand crank. Another one in there. Yeah, that's a lot of uh, kitchen stuff in here. And some, uh, these are for Coleman irons, which I wonder, if, I don't see the irons in here, but these are the, the rest so you don't scorch your table when you're setting your iron down. Okay, that's some neat stuff. Search continues. We've got a, uh, looks like a 1980s Coca-Cola. This is the uh, Christmas bear set. You can see those ads all over the place. And the tumblers, they're all in there. And they all appear to be in good shape. So a little, somebody who's into collecting Coca-Cola stuff. Oh, 1995. I was off by six years. I thought it was from the 80s. 95, well, that's going back long enough anyway. We've got a... Uh, uh, perpetual motion carriage clock not an antique it's quartz but eh, that's the kind of thing somebody would buy a little decorative thing clocks always sell that's why i never have problems selling a clock that will go get you know there's one problem that i've got so far is that almost everything i'm finding in these boxes is sellable i mean not such a bad problem to have dump out these uh this is a silver or a silver plate. I'm looking for a signature stamp on the bottom. I don't see one. Likely silver plate uh, stamp vase. So it looks like a little basket bouquet. That's kind of neat. Well, this box is marked antique toys, which to meet that definition would have to be 100 years old or older. And they are not. They are McDonald's toys from, looks like the 90s. That's from... Uh, Dinosaurs TV show. And they still work. Somebody went to town buying these. Gosh, I did not like that show. This was like the most ill mannered child in TV history. It wasn't even human. Um, looks like some Garfield, Woody the Woodpecker, Muppet Babies, still in their plastic. You know, surprisingly, people buy this stuff. Oh, that's Batman. No, that's the Penguin, but I mean, it's from the Batman movie. The old Catwoman vehicle. Yeah, well, there is some value there. I'll set that one aside. I've not been... Uh, I basically just got myself a couple square feet to stand in here. And as I've been tunneling through the stuff that's going to charity, I've been putting in my wife's vehicle because that's what I'm using today. These are all sort of collector plates. You know, I, I always thought they were kind of throwaway things, um, but the last couple of times I put those through auction, they actually did pretty reasonably. Um, I better take a break from this because I've got the vehicle fully loaded up. And I gotta go run that down to charity and come back and keep on digging. Continuing to go through boxes, I've taken now, uh, this will be my third load to charity of just sort of general household stuff that, uh, you know, I don't think will do great in an auction, but it's still sellable. Oh, look, there's a watch. And it's ticking. Each of these boxes has something, I mean, everything is different. And, uh, you know, I went through this, it looked like it was a bunch of gloves, but underneath all the gloves was a German cuckoo clock with a cross pen in it. Um, although we always seem to take a lot to charity, I'm not overly concerned because I'm really trying to thin down this stuff to the best of what's here. And there's always like this uh, cool 1970s um, cab over semi model kit that somebody had done up for their own transport company in a nice wooden specialty case. That's cool. Um, but portable coffee maker, usable, but not really something I could sell at auction. So that will go to charity. And I'm trying to get another car load done here today. 
because I can't go and do this kind of stuff tomorrow. Um, so what I'm doing now is basically just trying to go through all this and figure out what can go to charity, what should I save for future sale. Oh, is nice, another nice pen. That looks like a little alarm clock. I can almost guarantee that's what that is, yeah. West clock, and that looks like an old radio. Oh, look at this. This is the Princess Diana Beanie Baby. Now, oh, and there's other stuff in here too. Playing cards, those can go. Crib pegs, mmm, I feel like we need those. My wife and I play crib. Feel like I'm aging myself, but I don't care. We play crib, so be it. Um, I used to always laugh at and go, ah, you know, this stuff isn't worth anything. And then we had an auction recently and I sold four of these things for 2,700 bucks. And uh, amongst that was one of these, uh, the larger one, but the Princess Diana bear, which is this one. This was issued by Thai Corporation when Princess Diana passed away. It's got the white rose on the royal purple bear. So who knows? I will try and sell that thing. A little Bible. Because uh, I've been proven wrong. Apparently there's people spending money on things that I wouldn't have thought they would. So it goes to show what I know. But I will certainly try and get a couple extra bucks out of that if I can. All right, we got some silk scarves. And you actually have to pay attention. See, that's Calgary Highlanders. This is a military, like, um, uh, some of those are like sweetheart things that they would have given to your your lady. So you got to just kind of check and make sure that they're not something absolutely very special. I mean, they're cool, as they are. And we've got some tins and boxes in here, too. Filled with more stuff. Oh, there's jewelry. Oh, look. You guys see what I found? Nice. Uh, it's not antique, but it is a cameo. Those always sell well. Nice to find a little bit of jewelry in here. Sometimes that can be, uh, you know... Good things come in small packages, they say. Well, with jewelry, that's certainly the case. Little, looks like a Hell's Gate, British Columbia. It's a little, something you would have bought at a souvenir shop, probably at a gas station going through BC. This box was marked royalty papers. And yes, there are a bunch of newspapers and articles on the royal family, um, but there's other stuff in here too. This scrapbook, well, I assumed when I opened it up, it would be a bunch of stuff about the Queen. And it's not. It's actually somebody's matchbook collection from old gas stations and restaurants and hotels they stayed at, even for a 61 Oldsmobile. In fact, some of these matchbook covers can be worth quite a bit of money each, especially when they have advertising on it. Um, people will pay, you know... Um, I guess it really depends on the matchbook cover, but people do collect like the SO Purity 99. That's a rare one. That's probably like a $20 matchbook cover. If they're a little bit more rare and unusual, Husky, that's good. Um, or advertising certain cars, the Corvair, etc. Those will be a little bit more collectible than the others. So um, pretty interesting little scrapbook. We also found the 1937 Coronation booklet from the Illustrated London News. And another scrapbook. Let's see what's in here. Is it more matchbooks? No, this is what I was expecting. This looks like it's a royal. It's surprising to me how many people back at that time followed the royal family and really, really kept on top of scrapbooking and, and making these sort of... Uh, I wonder how often they'd actually look through it and look back at the pictures and stuff that they put together. But some interesting stuff in here. I'll probably end up putting this whole box up as one lot. Old newspapers, old magazines and all, and just uh, see what it goes for. Getting a good sized pile put together of stuff that's gonna be ready to go to the auction. Um, and as I work through these boxes, I found uh, this, which is a bunch of antique bottles, some older than others, old whiskey bottles. This kind of neat, it has the stopper inside. It actually looks like a bullet, but uh, it has a horse on it. I don't know if you can see that or not. That's, uh, Quite an oldie, that one. Campbell, Prade, and Co. Limited. Um, the other one I saw in here, well, there's 
several old bottles in here. This is a uh, torpedo bottle that actually uh, doesn't sit flat. You can't stand it up. It only goes on its side like that. And uh, that would be, you know, 1800s era, that. Looks like it was buried for a while. See, so has has sort of the sediment in there where it was sitting with water in it. So somebody probably dug that one up, maybe from an old dump site or from a river or something. Kind of neat. Here, here it sits in this uh, box. I'll set these aside. Uh, so there's a couple that are a little bit more special that uh, could probably be sold individually. So we'll put those separate. What I'm trying to do right now really is just get together all the larger lots of things. Anti-pain oil. Oh, there's still some in it. That might come in handy. If I find a poison bottle, well, A, you gotta be careful if there's something in it, but um, antique poison bottles, especially with this, uh, that are shaped like a skull, are very valuable. There's another antique torpedo bottle too. There's a few nice ones in here. Um, a poison bottle could be worth thousands of dollars versus, you know, a lot of these are kind of in the five to 10 to 20 kind of range, um, if that. So I'm hoping that maybe we'll find just that one that kind of pushes us over. What's this? Pure turpentine. Okay. Got a little bit of foam wrapped around it there. Oops. Spirits of turpentine. It's haunted turpentine. Okay. Well, I'll see if there's any other really old bottles in here that I should take out and maybe sell individually, but otherwise I'll probably just put this whole box up for sale and somebody can have uh, all the stuff that's in here. Look, there's an old gin bottle. We'll leave that in there for someone. Cool. One thing I've kind of haven't really stopped and looked at is this. It's actually a really nice early Coleman lantern. You see where it would have hung from a hook in the ceiling. This nice green milk glass shade. Little bit of a hairline crack maybe there, but nothing that's caused it to separate yet. Um, nice nickel base on it, really good condition. Something like that at auction could go for a few hundred dollars. So when we start to see things like this, I start to see the value of this unit, the value of this purchase coming together. However, there's an awful lot of stuff to go. And it really, um, you know, a lot of these items like the antique milk bottles and the quart sealer jars that I've been finding, they're, you know, like five or $10 each kind of at an antique store. That's a long way to go to get your money back on that stuff. So I'm putting them all out by the box to hopefully up the overall unit price and get the money back a, a bit sooner. Otherwise I'll be at this for quite some time. What do we have here? Oh, microscope set. Oh, and a lunch kit. Let's see what it, Beverly Hillbillies lunch kit. That's cool, it's missing the handle, and it doesn't feel like it has the thermos in it, but that's neat. There was a time that would have been pretty collectible. What's this, a little, this looks like a McDonald's Happy Meal. Yeah, it is, with Lego in it. The original box and the Lego set. It looks, it feels like it's inside. Let's have a look and see if it's in there still. Okay, yeah, that's neat. Geez, I remember getting this when I was a kid. What year is this from? That's early. 1984, yep. I would have been just a little kid, but I do remember getting that. The weird thing is, the box still kind of smells like French fries. Like, how is that even possible after all those years? But it does. Anyway, it's neat. It's got the original Happy Meal box with the Lego kit. That's probably gonna be, oh, there's two of them. There's another one in there too. That's uh, surprisingly would go for, I think a good, good amount of money at auction because that's not the sort of thing you find every day. Who would have kept that? They got this little microscope set here. Oh, some fun stuff in that box. That's neat. Okay, I will admit that I'm tired. It's 10 p.m. now. I've been at this now. This is my second day of clearing this stuff out. And I have a good size pile of stuff here, which is gonna go to auction. That's all listed, ready to go. I've got all this stuff behind me, which I have to sort. And the reason why it is uh, separated is because it's, well, things that I need to put together in lots or they're things that I think could be sold individually. But I'm gonna carry on and continue on the next episode as I go through the rest of the stuff. We start to assemble things for auction. And by the end of this series, the end of this um, mini series that we're doing here, we'll see exactly how all of this stuff fares and whether we did okay. Again, the investment here was about $2,000 US, about $2,700 Canadian um, for all of this. And we're gonna see kind of just how much we do. Uh, in this case, we are seeing and testing the water to see what kind of the, the profit is. So stay tuned for that. 
Um, we'll probably even live stream the auction when that happens too. But anyway, as for now, guys, this was a busy day. I'm going to carry on with the digging through boxes very soon. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Gosh, it was a lot of work so far. We've got a lot more to go. And plus, don't forget, there's still a whole trailer full of stuff. And I think that's where the good stuff's going to be because I don't think anybody's been through that in a long time. So stay tuned for episodes two, which will be coming out soon. But as for me, I'm off to bed, guys. Good night. Have a lovely day. And uh, as always, bye for now. Bye, guys.